Well, good morning and welcome to Calvary Baptist Church's Sunday morning worship online. I'm Pastor Brett and it's a treat to have all of you with us this morning, but we want to extend a special welcome to those of you who are dads. It's Father's Day, which means it's kind of special, and we just want to say Happy Father's Day to all of you who are dads out there. I don't know about you dads, but I love Father's Day. You know, on Father's Day, my girls send me gifts, and I love getting gifts. And my wife is kind enough to make one of my favorite meals and one of my favorite desserts and as you can tell I love eating uh, but one of the other things I love about Father's Day is I get to tell dad jokes so here's a few just to kind of get you warmed up uh, for this morning why could the bicycle not stand up on its own well because it was too tired <laughs> why, why can't a nose be 12 inches long well, it would then be a foot. <laughs> or, um, what do you call an elephant who just feels like he doesn't have any purpose in life any longer? Irrelevant. Uh, don't worry, there's going to be more. I'm going to scatter them throughout uh, the service, so I know you're looking forward to that as we spend time together today. Of course, it's not just jokes that brought you here today. It's uh, the worship that brings us the worship of our Heavenly Father. And as we think about this Father's Day celebration, a part of that is acknowledging who the ultimate Father of each of us is, and that's our Father in Heaven. And so we're going to begin this morning by worshiping Him in song. Uh, we're going to be listening to the song Hosanna, which means God saves us, which is uh, the thing that uh, celebrates uh, what brings us here. And that's the acknowledgement that we are followers of God because of what uh, has happened through His Son. So listen to the song. I think it's a tune that'll be familiar. Sing along if you want. Just uh, uh, listen to the tune if that's more your preference. But enjoy the song as we begin our worship time together today. Come out your way. 
Well, what a great song, and I hope that it helped prepare you for all that God has in store for us the remainder of our time together. Just as singing and uh, spending time in song draws us closer to God, so too uh, spending time talking to Him, which is what prayer is, just having a conversation with God. We're going to move into that uh, in just a moment. Being Father's Day, we want to spend a little bit of time uh, praying for dads, and so um, we'll pause for just a, a moment in the service to allow you to remember your dad. If he's with you, uh, then that's a great cause for celebration. If, if not, I'm trusting that there's some good memories that maybe you can hold on to that will help with that as well. Um, but just so you moms don't feel left out in this process, uh, here's another joke for you. Um, if cow giving birth is calving, and if a sheep giving birth is lambing, when a woman gives birth, is she just kidding? Think about it. Um, with that, uh, if you'll bow with me, we'll spend a little bit of time in prayer this day. Almighty and Holy Father, how we thank you for this opportunity that you give us not just on Sunday mornings, and not just when we have our devotions in the morning or just before we go to bed at night, um, but constantly, all the time, every day, of coming before you and sharing our hearts with you. Lord, as we do so this day, we begin with a, a word of appreciation, of celebration for the good news about Irene. Uh, Lord, it's been kind of a rough week for her, but she's finally out of the hospital and has moved back into the, the rehab facility in Mount Angel. God, we're grateful for the progress that's been made, but we know that she's got a ways to go, and so we ask that your healing hand would continue to be upon her. Lord, we remember a, a, a prayer request that's been uh, given by Andrew, who's asked that we would remember uh, Ramona, a friend of his that he hasn't seen for a while, and she's just kind of been brought back to mind. We trust by the prompting of your spirit. So whatever it is that's going on in Ramona's life, Lord, may your hand be upon her. Just as we continue to pray for his Aunt Pam and his cousin Shelly um, in the things that you're doing in their lives. Beyond uh, the things happening here in our church, Lord, we think of our nation um, who continues in its struggle against the COVID-19 virus as well as um, the struggle that we've had dealing with racism and, and the various protests and riots that have been associated with that. Father, as we prayed last week, we continue to pray that it would be a spirit of peace, God, that would rest um, upon this nation. That the frustration, Lord, that the anger, that the hurt, um, God, might be able to be addressed, but addressed in a manner um, that doesn't lead to further destruction or injury. Father, we think of our law enforcement officers who have sort of become the, the single target of those who are um, angry about all that is taking place. God, we pray for them that you would grant them wisdom as they continue to interact um, with those who express their frustration. And we pray your hand of protection, God, that it might rest upon them and upon uh, those that they interact with as well. Beyond our nation, God, we uh, think of our world and we once again would come before you on behalf of uh, missionaries Glenn and Rita. Um, Father, as they're ministering there in the, the Congo, we know that they are facing a variety of different struggles, uh, many of them health-related. And, and so within a, a relatively short distance from them, they're dealing with the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, Lord. They're having to deal with a measles outbreak as well as Ebola, which just seems to be kind of a constant threat there. Lord, it, it seems daunting to us, and yet we know nothing is overwhelming to you. And so we pray that your hand of healing would be there in that land. And just as we pray, Lord, that you would watch over um, Glenn and Rita and those that they minister to and minister with. And then finally, Lord, we uh, pray for dads. Um, God, for the influence that they've had in our lives, all dads shape and mold us. Most of them, Lord, do so in a favorable manner. Others, not that way. But God, um, we know that there are ones that you have placed in our life. And so we pause for just a moment um, to remember our dads, God, and to recall those things that, um, again, shaped and molded us um, as you have directed. So uh, we pause for just a moment now, God, to lift before you our memories of our fathers.
Lord, for those um, whose fathers have passed, uh, we pray that there would be memories that they can hold on to. For those whose fathers are still with them, uh, God, we pray that there might be opportunity to, even if it's from afar, even if it's just uh, Zoom uh, capable in this day and age, uh, that there would be cause for celebration and uh, of giving thanks uh, for the roles that they've had in our lives. Be with us now, Lord, as we continue on in our service time. Be with us as we look to your word. Open our hearts and our minds to those truths that you would want revealed this day. And we pray all of these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, as we move into our sermon time today, we're continuing on in our Today I Choose series. Uh, we're going to go a little bit in a different direction uh, than we have been the last few weeks because this is the Father's Day edition. And of course, being Father's Day means I get to tell just a couple more Father's Day jokes. So uh, here's a couple more for you. What do you call imitation spaghetti? Impasta. Uh. Uh, did you know that the first French fries weren't really made in France? They were made in Greece. Uh. Think about it. Um, as we move into our, our time this morning, uh, just a quick refresher on how uh, Jesus utilized various styles of, of teaching. Uh, if you go through the text, if you go through scripture, especially the gospels, we see a variety of different ways that Jesus taught his followers and, and apostles in those days. Uh, part of what he did was to use parables. Uh, we see that he also would um, do hyperbole and memorable sayings. There's occasions when he would ask questions and use that as sort of the springboard uh, to move forward. He was also a master of using sort of visual imagery of that day and age. And so he would talk about vines and about widow's offerings. He made reference to little children. He even used the apostles' feet um, as a point of illustration at one point moment when he when he talked about washing them and, and demonstrated what it meant to have a servant's heart. And as we think about the various ways that Jesus taught, we see that there are really two significant mechanisms that, that he employed that I think added power to his teaching. One was obviously that he taught on spiritual truths. And there's just power in that when we proclaim the truths of God, when we, when we offer up those spiritual foundations, there's just something unique and, and significant that comes out of that. But the other mechanism, I think, that added um, weight to his teaching in that day was that he, he referred to things that the people could relate to, uh, things that were a part of their day and culture. And so he would talk about sheeps and goat and uh, about lost sheep. He'd talk about servants and leaven, wineskins and pearls and, and pigs. And while those things fit perfectly in Jesus' day, they're a little bit harder for us to connect with today. Now, we still can if we do a little bit of homework and a little bit of research, but it, it's more of a stretch for us. There are some still pieces of, of teaching that we can relate to, I think, very directly, such as when Jesus talks about the importance of having a strong foundation in the house. We understand that. Um, but when he talks about Samaritans, whether they be good Samaritans or bad Samaritans or just average Samaritans, um, it's a little harder for us uh, to relate to. And so this day, what, what I want to do is, is incorporate Jesus' uh, methodology um, by uh, connecting with um, a radio and using that sort of as the, the source of our uh, teaching, sort of the, the illustration for us this day. Now, why a radio? Well, as I was thinking about a Father's Day sermon, uh, one of the things that, that came to mind as I think about my dad is that whenever we would be doing a, a project together or he would be doing a project on his own, there was always a transistor radio that was present. My dad isn't so much of a music guy, but he loved sports. We lived in Southern California as I was growing up, and so he'd be listening either to the Rams or to the Lakers or to the Dodgers. If by chance there wasn't a professional team that was on, uh, he'd go to one of the local colleges. He'd listen to USC or UCLA. Occasionally he could even get a, a game from his own alma mater, Washington State. But virtually all of the time that, that he was out of doors, there would be a, a radio playing in the background. And as I, I thought a little bit about that, it, it dawned on me that there are some uh, pretty significant things that we can learn from the transistor radio. And so we're going to spend some time uh, using that. My hope is you'll think the same thing uh, as we uh, wrap up here in, in a few minutes. 
As you think about a, a radio, um, and I just happened to bring one for us uh, to look at today, um, in case you don't have one in your own home, um, we have a radio in our house, in fact several, my dad still has a radio that, that he has in his bathroom that he listens to every day as he's getting ready. Uh, but as you think about the, the, the radio, um, we know that they've come in different sizes and shapes uh, over the year, but almost all of them tend to be on the smaller size unless you have a boom box. Uh, they're powered by batteries so you can can take them uh, everywhere. And one of the things that, that we um, gain from our understanding or, or thinking about a, a radio is, is the fact that as a radio is being played, we have the capacity uh, to determine what is going to come out of it. You know, when, when uh, radios were, were first made and the, the original makers were companies like uh, RCA and Philco and GE and, and those kinds of companies, when they first began uh, making this in, in sort of mass production, um, they, they put them together in a way that they would uh, play any kind of music that you would want to hear. Now think for just a moment, what is your favorite kind of music? There's a lot of genres out there. Uh, for some people, it's rock and roll. For some people, it's country. Others, classical. Um, for some, it might be rap or hip hop or uh, R and B. Um, what is it that that you enjoy the most? Uh, for me, it's probably uh, classic uh, rock or a Christian. It would be somewhere in that. Now, that would not be the favorite for others of you. So, I want you to think about what your favorite is. And just as you have a favorite, you've also got a style or styles of music you're not a great fan of. What would those be for you? For me, I've never been able to fully appreciate the value of rap, and so it's not a station that I turn into very often. But one of the incredible things about, about this little box is that in, in the side of this thing, uh, the, the manufacturer, the creator of this, He's enabled it to be able to uh, produce whatever it is uh, that we want. Whether it be our favorite, whether it be something that we're uh, probably not going to be tuning to, or anything in between, all of it comes out of that, that one single box. God created it so that it could uh, project, or the, cre or the manufacturers created it so that it could project good or, or not as appealing music. And when we think about ourselves, one of the truths that we know is that uh, God created us initially as good. We know that because we read in Genesis that as God was about, a, about the creation process, one of the things that he said is different parts were made, uh, that's good. But then, of course, um, we know that our sinful, selfish nature emerged there in the garden. We, we fell uh, from that place of perfection of God's um, uh, being with us in an intimate way there initially. And so there is within us now both uh, good and bad aspects, uh, appealing and unappealing. Appealing because we still have God's image is a part of who we are, unappealing uh, because we are a fallen creation. And so as we think about our interaction with our world, and that would be world with a little w, um, that sphere of influence that we have, uh, we get to choose what it is that's projected through us. What is it that, that's conveyed through us? The message, the words, the actions, the, the character, even the demeanor that we uh, represent. And so one of the questions we have to ask is, uh, what is it that we project in our lives? When people listen to our lives, what is it that they hear? What is it that they see? Do they see uh, hope or encouragement? Do they see joy? Or, or do our lives bring with them kind of a big cloud and, and instead after they've spent time with us, they, they walk away feeling a sense of despair or spurred up and within them a hatred or bitterness or, or jealousy? There's a couple of passages that, that speak about this. I think in, in Matthew 7, we read the words of Jesus himself who had this to say, Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Now, Jesus here isn't really talking about trees. He's talking about the lives of his followers. And the indication is those, those that, that are, are good on the inside or tuned to the right station are going to project or broadcast that. 
those who are maybe not that way are going to have a different message. Uh, John rewards this a little bit differently, maybe more directly in 1 John, the first chapter with these words. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. And so there's that indication that, that a part of what is within us is what's lived outside of us. And so uh, we have a little bit of, of, uh, of an indicator there when we, when we see what it is that we broadcast. And we get to choose that. One of the wonderful qualities and characteristics of a, of a transistor radio is that, is that it can play whatever it is that, that we want, we get to choose. But there's a, a second quality there, and, and that is that not only do we get to choose the, the, the kind of message that's being proclaimed, we get to choose the volume of that message. Uh, you know, in, in old-fashioned radios, uh, when you would look at them, you would control the, uh, the thing in, in a couple of different ways. Either there would be knobs on the front, that you could turn, or in the case of this one and others, um, there's a little slide, oh, here it is, on the little, little bit of a wheel on the side here. And, and you can use one of those wheels to adjust the, the frequency to try to line up. But the other one has to do with the volume. You turn it one way, the volume gets louder. You turn it the other way, the volume gets softer. And as owners of the radio, we get to determine how loud or how soft we want it. We can have it so it's barely heard, or we can have it so it's booming. And I want to suggest to you this morning that when it comes to being proclaimers of what it is that God would want us to broadcast, that there's time when both of those are appropriate. You know, when we think about the, the, the actual radio, there's times when we want it loud, such as when we're out in the backyard with some friends and we're barbecuing and we've got a crowd over, we want it cranked up there a, a little bit. On the other hand, if we're with our honey and we're at lookout point and we're gazing on the beautiful lights of the city, we probably want it turned down a little bit, a little bit softer. There's a time for both uh, of those. And just as there's a, a time for each of those in, in the life of a regular radio, I think there's, there's a time in, in how we project in our natural lives as they connect with our, our followers or as our spiritual followings of Jesus. There's times when we need to be loud, when we need to be direct, when we need to be clear, and, uh, and we need to ensure that our voice is being heard over the, the noise and the shouts of those who would seek to move us or our churches or our nation in, in ways that, that move us um, contrary to God or, or distances from God. But there's other times when uh, we realize that if everybody's shouting, nobody's going to be heard. And so uh, maybe the softer approach is more appropriate. And how do we know which one to use when? Well, as we have mentioned many times in the past, that's where we look to the Holy Spirit and trust in His leading and His prompting. In Romans, the 8th chapter, the 26th verse, we read these words. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, in our, in our uncertainty, we don't know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us. And so when we're not really certain about that, uh, about that volume level, then we, we look to the Spirit. And we ask, God, help us to know what it is that you would have us uh, to do. How is it that you would have us to approach this? But we have to be careful. If we're too soft, we run the risk of not being heard. If we're too loud, and then at times the, the, the message becomes lost because of the distortion that's there. You know, as uh, a teenager growing up um, in Southern California, again, one of the, the kinds of music that I wasn't a big fan of in those days was country. Um, didn't hear country very often, weren't a lot of country stations in, in those days, and, and I just wasn't drawn to it. it, it all the songs sounded kind of twangy. Um, it seemed like it was a pretty simple melody line that they had. It seemed like every song was either about wheat fields or pickups, and that just wasn't something that I was particularly interested in. But when I got to my college years, I went to Oklahoma State University, and you either listen to country there or you don't listen to anything, because that's about all that they've got. And yet, as I, for the very first time, really began to listen to those songs, I realized that they spoke about an honesty of life that no other genre 
really did, that those simple melodies weren't quite as simple as I had made them out to be. And that there was a beauty to uh, country music that um, really was almost a, a melodic poetry that came across. And I learned to love country music and, and continue to enjoy it thoroughly to this day. Now, if someone back in my high school days would try to have forced me uh, to listen to country music, I would have rebelled against that and, and, and perhaps would have rejected country music for the rest of my life. But because God was able to reveal that in His timing and in His way, it was something that I was able to, to learn to appreciate, not just appreciate, but, but also love. I think the same thing is, is true sometimes in our interaction with others. We have to be willing to trust the, the Spirit to prompt us on, on when to be soft and, and when to be loud. We need to know when, uh, when uh, that, that quieter moment is appropriate or when we need to be vocal and direct and, um, and even assertive in what we have to share. Because again, if we, if we don't, if we miss the mark, we, we run the, the risk of not allowing that message to be heard in the way that God would intend you know, I think we've all had that experience where we've been uh, pulled up to a, a stoplight and we're sitting there in our vehicles and a, another vehicle comes up next to us and, and its radio is just blaring. Um, so much so that the car next to us is shaking and even our car is shaking because it's so loud. You know, when that happens, it doesn't matter what the genre is. It's so loud that it's become distorted. It, it's lost its, its appeal. It's annoying to us. We have to sense God's direction, God's leading, and the Spirit's prompting to know, oh, when that's right. So as we think about the radio, as we think about our lives, we, uh, we see that there's a wonderful uh, ability within it to, uh, to get the right message to be broadcast, if that's what we choose. We see that there's that capacity for us to change the volume as we, we sense is appropriate. And then there's a, a third piece that's important in listening to the radio, and that is you want to make sure you've got the best signal that you can. You want to do those things and enhance the signal strength. One of the things that does that is, is, is depends on how the antenna is pointed. Now, um, for some of you, you're not even going to know what this thing is, but this is called an antenna. Um, and it comes out and you can point it in different directions. And one of the things that we know is that the more uh, in line with the tower, the broadcasting tower that the antenna is, the better the signal will be. The further away from the uh, broadcasting tower, uh, the weaker the signal is going to be. But we're the ones that get to choose that. We're the ones that get to choose which way the, the antenna is pointed. We get to choose whether it's in the right direction, and it's enhancing the signal, or whether it's in the, the wrong direction, weakening the signal. And so as we think about that connection with our lives, the same thing is, is true in terms of our connection with God. Are we more in line? Are we more connected with him or, 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 or not? If we're pointed in, in, in the right direction, that will uh, uh, build up and affirm things in us. If it's pointed in the wrong direction, not so much the case. And so we see that, that the way we live our lives has a great bearing on that. The places that we go, the, the things that we watch, the friends that we keep, the music that we listen to, all of these move us in one way or, or one direction or the other, either more in line with the antenna or farther away. And so if we spend most of our nights in a bar or watching suggestive TV shows or, or programs or hanging around with people of, of questionable character, um, these things matter and are likely to move us away from that closeness with God. As we read in 1 Corinthians 15, these words from Paul, don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. On the other hand, if we spend a night a week or a night a month uh, doing some things at the Union Gospel Mission or if we uh, kind of tune our watching habits toward uh, right now media or things that are uplifting or encouraging to us or if we spend our, our, our downtime with, with others uh, in a way that together it, it helps us draw closer and uh, develop an element of maturity in our walk with God, all of these strengthen our relationship with God. And so we have this piece of the antenna that, that determines whether we're, we're drawing closer or moving farther away from God. But there's a, another aspect to that, and that is just the physical distance that we are. Um, 
if we're closer to the tower, we have a stronger signal. If we're farther away from the tower, we have a weaker signal. I'm not sure if you've ever had this experience in your life, but, but when I was growing up, we would go to the mountains every summer for vacation. Uh, we'd go into the Sierras, and a part of the journey, it was about an eight-hour journey, would take us through the desert. And there's a section there in the desert for about an hour where we could get no signal or very little signal. We knew that was coming, and so we'd have some other things that we could do in the car to keep us busy. But as we began to move out of that particular zone and move closer to um, a town of any size, uh, one of the things that we would find is that we begin to get more stations, and the stations that we had would get stronger and stronger and stronger. The same thing is true as we, we think about um, our relationship with God. The closer that we draw to Him, the stronger that relationship will be. The general rule is uh, the closer to the source, the stronger the signal, the further from the source, the weaker the signal. Now, if God is the source, and we know that He is, um, how then do we draw closer to Him? How do we enhance and strengthen that relationship? Well, how do we strengthen any relationship? We do it by spending time with a person. So how do we uh, enhance a relationship with God? Well, we do it by spending more time with God. And the wonderful thing is that uh, we can make that happen because we can spend time with God anywhere because He's everywhere. Let me say that one more time. We can uh, spend time with God anywhere because He's everywhere. And so one of the beauties about a relationship with, with God is that we don't have to make an appointment. You know, for those that are coming out of the, uh, this COVID-19 uh, virus thing, one of the things that's been difficult is to, to try to get an appointment in a restaurant or the hairstylist because they're, they're so backed up. We don't have to worry about that with God. We don't have to make an appointment. We don't have to wait till he's finished talking uh, to someone else. He's always there waiting uh, to have that conversation with us at any moment at any time. And so if we're out shooting baskets in the, in the driveway um, and we're, we're there by ourselves shooting, we're really not by ourselves. We can have a conversation with God while we're doing that. Or if we're out doing some fishing and we're enjoying the beauty of His uh, creation, it's not really just us and creation. God's there too. And so we can have a conversation with Him. Or if we find ourselves working on the car, we can listen to the radio, or we can use that time to, uh, to have a conversation with God. And what do we talk about with God? Well, whatever's on our heart, because you know that's what He's looking at anyway. And so if we're having a good day and things are going well, we can, we can share that and have that conversation with Him. If things are not going so well, we can, can share and have that conversation with Him. If we're angry about things or confused about things, we, uh, we can explain and, and, and have a conversation about that as well. Because He knows. He knows. And He knows that, that because we don't always understand the things that happen in our lives, sometimes we get mad at Him. And you know what? He's okay with that. And He'll help us to better grasp those things that we can understand and be at peace with those things that are maybe perhaps beyond us at the moment, uh, maybe are just not going to be revealed this side of heaven because we're not God. And there are just some things that we're, we're not going to get. When my girls were uh, growing up, there were uh, different occasions in their life where I'd have to impose some boundaries or some rules that they did not like and often didn't understand. Why couldn't they eat dessert before they had their dinner? Why couldn't they stay out past 10 o'clock uh, on a date? Why couldn't they go out uh, with this guy? And I'd put those boundaries in place and they'd get upset and they would get frustrated with me. And that was okay. Because I knew at that stage, at that point in their lives, they just lacked the maturity uh, to fully understand. Because I knew that the things that I was doing, those boundaries I was putting into place, were ultimately in their best interest. God does the same with us. And so, as dads, and as husbands, and as, as men, and as women, God allows us to choose how we're going to live our lives. 
as we think about this instrument that God has given us, just as uh, we think uh, about a radio, how are we going to use that? Today, how are we going to uh, live our lives? Today, will we uh, live a life that conveys a good or a bad message, a hopeful or a hopeless message? Today, will the tone or the volume of what we're having to say fit with what the circumstances are? Are we going to trust in the Spirit to guide us, or are we going to try to take control uh, ourselves? Today, are we going to make choices that draw us closer to the source or move us farther away? That source of love and of forgiveness and of justice of all things good, the choice is ours. So, again, uh, my hope is that this lesson from the transistor radio will be one that, that you can take with you. Next time you see a radio, uh, remember what it was that we had to talk about this day, and may God impart on us those truths, not just now, but every day. Amen. Okay, as we move toward wrapping things up this morning, it's Father's Day and we always like to try to have a little bit of fun with those occasions. And so we're going to show a little video uh, that's pretty humorous in nature. It's put out by the skit guys and uh, it's entitled Things You'll Never Hear a Dad Say. Oh, watch the video. I think you will agree. I don't care how late you stay out. Stay out as late as you want. You wanna borrow the new car? You wanna borrow my credit card? Kids today, they really have it rough. I have no idea where we are or where we're going. I mean, when I was their age, life was easy, super easy. Why haven't you gotten a tattoo yet? How come you don't have any piercings yet? Yep, we're lost. We are completely lost. Ooh, sports. It, it, just do whatever the mechanic says to do. Vehicle maintenance is completely overrated. Look, whatever the mechanic is asking, just pay him. Pay him whatever he wants. I wish they had soap operas at night. I like that boy. You should date him. You should date him immediately. Well, what about the creepy guy with the motorcycle? He's cute. Yeah, sure. Spring break in Tahiti sounds fun. Hey, make sure you get all your video games done before you start your homework. You don't have to pass all your classes. What? You have a project due tomorrow and you've known about it for four weeks and you haven't started yet? Sweet! Doesn't anybody want to know if we're there yet? Remember, if you need anything between midnight and 4 a.m., please come wake me up. Hey, I'm on the phone. Could you bring the baby over and let him climb all over me? Hey! Hey, can you please turn that music up? Well, we just stopped for lunch 10 minutes ago, but yeah, let's stop again. I never have trouble with my toddler. I never have trouble with my teenagers. I never have trouble with my adult children. You know, she's right. We are ruining her life. Yes, more homework to correct. All right, whining. Yay, tantrums. Mmm, vomit. We just really need to spoil these kids more. Sorry, buddy. I don't know any good jokes at all. You're 16. You pretty much know everything now. I think 18's a great age to get married. Okay, remember, make sure you turn on all the lights before you leave the house. Hey, could you leave the front door open for a couple hours? Thanks. Whoa, money really does grow on trees. Pretty funny. Um, they do a great job on their, on their stuff. We're going to move to a time of prayer in, in just a moment, but of course, um, it seems like it wouldn't be appropriate to wrap things up without just a few more jokes. And so um, here's three more uh, to send you off with. What do you call a dog that can do magic? A labracadabra door. <laughs> um, uh, what did the buffalo say to his son as he was dropping him off at school? Bison. <laughs> oh, what do you call a fish that has two knees? Well, a toonie fish, of course. I can hear you laughing out there. I know you're loving this stuff. Again, dads, happy Father's Day. I hope you have a wonderful uh, rest of the day. And let's go ahead and wrap things up in a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for this day, and we thank you for you. 
as our Heavenly Father. Lord, as much as we uh, rejoice in and celebrate and acknowledge our earthly fathers, uh, God, we know that you are the ultimate of everything good. We know that our eternity is set because of you. We know that our eternity gets to be spent with you. And so thank you. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for the ways that you put up with us as your children. Thank you, Father, for um, simply allowing us to be in relationship with you. Watch over us as we leave here at this place. Uh, God, for those that have family gatherings, may your hand be upon those. For those that are just kind of off on their own, God, I pray that this would be a great rest of the day for them too. Be with us until we have opportunity to come together again. And we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.